The following is a Stars and Strikes Doubles rebroadcast, featuring some of our most memorable recent programs. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Stars and Strikes Doubles. The legendary bowling center, Stars and Strikes Doubles, features the best caliber bowlers from around New England and team competition. Stars and Strikes Doubles is produced and conducted by the New Hampshire Hamilton Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Everybody and welcome once again to Stars and Strikes Doubles here on the Winds from the London Dairy Bowling Center. So glad you could join us as we begin a brand new series. Uh, already, Dan, we have four teams that have qualified for the Doubles Tournament of Champions, and uh, that means there are only two spots left, so time is getting short. Two spots and four teams, and uh, we got two... Uh Two teams this week that uh, mix of veterans, well, all veterans, and uh, it right. should be a good matchup all the way through this ladder. All right, let's uh, introduce our first two teams as we start this series off. First of all, our number five seeded team from Needham, Massachusetts, Reggie DeLine, and his partner from Nashua, New Hampshire, is Joe Ashline. Okay, and Reggie comes in averaging 122, roll-off score at 660, and Joe Ashline is 127, and his roll-off score also 660. All right, and both, of course, have made several appearances on the program, and they will be facing our number four seeded team from Dover, New Hampshire, Bob Mazur, and his partner from Claremont, New Hampshire, is Steve Vadney. Okay, and Bob Mazur comes in averaging 124, roll-off score 672. Steve Adney's at 125 and roll-off uh, score at 661. All right, of course, uh, a long ride for uh, one of these two teams possibly to get into the Tournament of Champions, but it has been done before, and it all starts with this week here today. So we're expecting a good match. We're going to be right back for it. The first of three strings here on Stars and Strikes Doubles after these words. Don't go away. All right, let's take a look at the 10 bowlers who have qualified for this series on Stars and Strikes Doubles. From the top, again, they roll off in singles competition, and then they're teamed up afterwards. The number one and two bowlers, Frank Rose and Dan Broder, our top-seeded team with a combined roll-off score of 1403 as they each crack 700. Tom O'Brien and Wayne Denon will be our number two-seeded team. Rick Balden, uh, Rico Baldinelli finishing fifth. He'll be partnered with Gary Carrington as the number three-seeded team. And the other four bowlers you see there are the four we're watching today, Bob Mazur and Steve. Vadney, Reggie DeLine, and Joe Ashline. Here's the way the teams stack up one through five. The winners today will move on to face Baldinelli and Carrington next week. And then, of course, on it goes up the ladder until we uh, finally decide which one of these teams will go to the doubles tournament of champions, which is coming up uh, just before you know it. Yes, in the spring. And about right now, I could use a little spring. You and me both. <laughs> I think there are a lot of people up here who feel the same way. Except yeah. maybe the ski, oper ski area yes, operators. That's right. They're having a big year. <laughs> Joe Ashline starts the match with a spare. Joe Ashline leading off for the team of Ashline and DeLine. They are the uh, fifth seeded team in. You might have noticed an uh, interesting little sidelight to this ladder. Oh, my. Joe Ashline with a big start strike on spare. Well, he's thrown a total of two, uh, three balls in those two. Two frames, spare in the first, follow up with a strike, and all of a sudden Steve Vadney's got a little bit of work ahead of him. Keep up the pace. What I started to say was the team that won last year's doubles tournament of champions, both of the teammates are in this ladder. Joe Ashline and Gary Carrington won last year's event as a team, and they're both in this ladder but not bowling together. So each of them uh, hoping to get a shot at maybe winning again this year with a new partner. And it's 10 box for Steve Vadney in his first frame. Again, though, just to uh, emphasize, the bowlers do not enter the roll-offs as teams. They enter as individuals, and then uh, they're paired up according to how they finish. Diamond leave for Steve. Two, four, five, and eight pins. So two open frames for Steve Vadney, and all of a sudden the 
team of DeLine and Ashline. And gonna have a sizable lead after two, two frames. Already at 11, plus the fill from Reggie DeLine. And here is Reggie, overall making his ninth appearance here on the wins. Right in the pocket, that close to a double strike. Just the five pin left. Oh, short approach by Reggie. Ooh, Ooh. Sliding by to the left. I wonder if maybe he thought that if he covered that wood like that, he might be able to take care of the five pin also. But instead, it's a nine fill and nine in the third box. Reggie from Needham, Mass. Works for General Mass Marketing. Almost. I think it would be fair to say that Reggie is probably up as much as anybody on everything going on <laughs> in candlepin bowling. Absolutely. He is well connected. Well, our first look at Bob Mazur. Well, first look today, anyways. Been with us many times. Yeah, all four of these guys uh, certainly should be very comfortable here. And Bob gets the spare. Fine shot. The four horsemen, of course, difficult enough, but then the nine pin in the back. So they had the two pin dance back there to knock the nine pin down. And of course, their first mark of the match for the Steve of, uh, team of Vadney and Mazer. Decent eight drop and wants that wood to stay in between the three and the nine. Makes it a little easier. No. Look out. Nope. There it was. This time only for the 10 bucks, though. So it's 11 pin advantage. Well, I wonder if Joe Ashline got warmed up the first two boxes. He only threw three balls. So <laughs> he's back up for the fifth and sixth frames, though. Joe Ashline and Reggie DeLine actually had the identical roll off score, as you probably saw at the beginning beginning of the segment. They each rolled a 660. So just for the sake of determining who was ninth seed and who was 10th, that was determined by high single in the roll off. And uh, Reggie DeLine had a 147 as his high game. Joe Ashline's high game was a 141. So that's how uh, ninth and 10th was determined. By the way, Jack Sanek finished 11th. Haven't seen Jack for a while uh, here on the wins. He missed by just two pins with a 658. And one pin behind him was David Blaine at 657. Give me an idea of how close it is near the top. Oh, oh my. Was two, that two, a quick strike? <laughs> two times on lane 29, and both times this happened. Wow. He's got pins falling forward. <laughs> Uh, an interesting story about um, Mr. Blaine, too, had a 202 game in that roll off. 200 game and still missed making the cut. Wow. A reminder that uh, tomorrow here on the Winds, we will begin our annual mixed doubles series. Our first match tomorrow at noon. Bruce Young and Tony Marie Baldinelli against Kevin Davis and Nancy Hunt. Nine box for Steve Vadney. The difference 10, but now coming up against that big strike in the sixth. Steve back in the pocket. Almost had the inverted uh, triangle. But kicked the four pin out, leaves himself the five and the eight. Yes, important spare right there. You don't want, I don't think either either one of these teams wants to get too far behind because they both have the potential to be very explosive. Try and hang in as close as you can 
get to that third game and give yourself a chance to win. That's a six on the strike. And the seven. Reggie moves over to lane 29. Here at Londonderry Bowling Center. And right through the heart for the spread eagle. And now the two pin is out of there. Still looking at five pins. And a six. So two you know, boxes that Reggie would rather forget there. Especially that one. I mean, your first ball, your object pin is the head pin. He hit it. Spread eagle. Now he's going to go one side or the other. He tries a two pin side, hits the two pin, gets the two, tries the other side and gets just the three pin. So on every ball he hit the object pin, but still ended up with only a six. Bob Mazur is five on the fill put up by, on the spare put up by Steve Vadney. And also that pin up front should be out of place. Cindy Sissom. Heading down to check it. And it will be out of play and removed. I don't know if that <laughs> helps the shot any at all. It still will, won't be too much fun. Well, he's got to concentrate on hitting the head pin. Hopefully one side or the other, the ball or the head pin, do most of the damage. Pretty good effort. Here's one of those situations where you'd be just thrilled to get a nine box. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but tough to do with the seven, nine, and ten still standing. So matching seven boxes in the seventh. Seven's wild. The chance to pick up some ground here opposite the six. Oh, but a half Worcester for Bob. He's already gained one. Lead is going to be under 10 now. Nine, in fact. Joe Ashline, by the way, a little sneak preview, will also be in the mixed double series. Oh, my word. You know, if he practiced a little bit, uh, <laughs> he would get some real quick strikes. You know, they, I mean, look, that was all of two seconds. I mean. <laughs> Not even. Wow. Now he's had two strikes over in that lane, hasn't he? Yeah, this time missing the head pin, but those pins are dancing around. One, three, and seven left for Joe. No wood this time. No, just missed it. It's a nine fill, gives him 114 through nine. So Joe rolls six boxes in this first game. He gets three strikes and a spare. <laughs> and it's a 124 for the team after one. All in a day's work for Joe. Steve Vadney gets two marks though here in the last two, just about make this thing even. If they're two big marks, he'll have a, well, maybe a shot at one. Let's see. Well, the five and nine is is the good news. The bad news is the wood out in front. He's going to have to really come up on the left-hand tip. No. Nope. Actually had to turn that and drive it straight back. Difficult shot. The 10. 96. Got a break there, kicking out the four pin. Three, six, ten left for Steve. No roadblock this time. Clear shot at those three. And the spare. It shows you why he's had some uh, 48 appearances. <laughs> More than anyone. More wins than anyone, 31 
There's a seven on the mark, a 113. So the difference will be 11 after one game with two to follow here on Stars and Strikes Doubles as we begin a brand new series. Glad you're with us. Ashline and DeLine with the lead. We'll be back. Before we get back to the action here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, just a quick reminder about the Benefit Bowlathon for the Salem Boys and Girls Club. Today is the day going on right now. In fact, over at Park Place Lanes, you still have time to get over there and participate if you're interested. But, of course, you can also participate by making a donation through us here on Stars and Strikes. And what Dan and I are doing is we're having a little three-string competition of our own, and uh, we're raising money for the Boys and Girls Club uh, by having our own little three-game bet. Not a bet, but a little friendly wager, I guess, would be the way to describe it. So uh, if you'd like to pledge some money uh, on behalf of either Dan or myself, you can either send in a flat amount check, or you can pledge an amount per pin that you think Dan or I will score in three, in three games. And please include your name and address so that uh, if we need to send you a score back and let you know what the official amount is, we can do that. And send that in to Bolathon, Dan or Doug. We want to know who you're supporting. Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. And I think uh, right now, after the latest unofficial tally, Dan is about $5 ahead. So <laughs> I need to, to really pick it up here and uh, uh, gain a little more support so that I can overtake Dan. Raise more money. Game two starting here. And uh, Bob Mazer with the nine drop. Don't you hope you're going to get a few of these to shoot at, huh? Absolutely. Who needs the wood? That was right on that six pin. That's mark number four for the team of Mazer and Vadney. All strikes. The difference in this match right now. Uh, all spares, I should say. The difference in this match. The three strikes thrown by Joe Ashline. If any of them had been thrown together, this thing could uh, wow. really be out of hand. Ooh, oh, Wilson did Bob get to catch it? it? No. <laughs> the 10. Talking about that uh, Boys and Girls Club Bolathon to benefit the Salem Clubhouse of the Boys and Girls Club. This is the eighth year of this event. More than $100,000 has already been raised. It's amazing. They do a nice job. Good benefit. I hope you all get involved. Spare for Reg picks off that 10 pin. Just barely nicking it. Obviously, we have not uh, had our little competition, Dan and I, but uh, after we do, we'll give you the score, announce the score on the air. You may find that there is a slight audio problem with your television uh, when my score is announced, but, uh, <laughs> but we will announce the score and let you know how much money was raised through the event. However, if you were to beat me, there wouldn't be enough oh. audio available. There won't be enough time available either to talk about it. <laughs> Reggie with two in a row. This is all over that uh, three pin. Drove everything straight back into the 6-10. Had some wood to benefit him. Two in a row now, as Doug said. Steve Vadney in the pocket, 5-7. Right. It's a situation you might want to miss the five pin, hit the right-hand tip of the wood and swing it around. Let's see if Steve tries that. No, he's right on the five. And the 10 bucks, 37 through three. Steve looking for their first strike. Just the six pin left. And the spare. Number five for the team. They've yet to put two marks together though. Joe Ashline working on a spare left by his partner Reggie DeLine. Reggie started this game off with two marks. Of course the first game Joe started and threw two marks. Goes through the middle. Maybe 
He's a leadoff guy. You gotta <laughs> put him up to bat first. <laughs> Joe, as we've mentioned several times, works for Cronin Electronics, does a lot of his bowling at the Lita Lanes right in Nashua. There's a 10 box for Joe. Joe's high triple of 505. Which is a state record. That has been verified then, yes, Alan. Yes, it has. Was that at Lita? I don't remember. Yes, it is. Was it? Yes, yeah. it was. Explain the process when a, when a state record is broke. Well, actually, why don't you wait until we, after this next commercial, because I have a feeling Joe may be converting this, <laughs> which he does for a spare. We'll get to that in just a second. A spare up for each team. Just about at the halfway mark. Pretty good match going. Ashline and DeLine in the lead. We'll be back. Bob Mazur ready to go, working on a mark left by his partner. And you'll have the triangle, four, seven, eight, for left-hand corner of the shootout. Good fill of seven on Steve Adnay's spare. And another spare. First time they've been able to put back-to-back -back marks together. And three out of five frames the second game are marks, all spares. Still looking for that first strike. Bob pushed that one a little bit. Just three on the fill. Now I started to have you, uh, what I was going to have you explain was the process by which state records are, are verified because you would think I'm sure most people probably think, well, if everybody knows what the record is, somebody throws a score that's better, that's the new record, but it's not quite that easy. No, it's not quite that easy, but all the lanes uh, in each association are sanctioned. However, over the course of time, things change and things shift and you refinish the lanes and there's certain specs and, and uh, certain uh, lane restrictions that there has to, has to be met, obviously. And uh, so once a record or a parent record has been as you can see, I can't do two things at once here. <laughs> We've got seven on that spare and a nine. And uh, once they feel a record has been broken, they notify the state association president, who in turn will notify the lane inspector, and he will go down within 48 hours and inspect the lanes that that record was hit on. And barring any unforeseen uh, altering of the lanes, um, it will be declared a official state record. Ooh, Reggie slips by the single. Does that happen often where something would be not quite right? And not, not very often, no. There are other things involved too where um, in a roll-off situation there has to be so many bowlers participating at the time. You know, obviously you couldn't be out there by yourself. Oh, there's the first strike for the team of Vadney and Mazur as Steve Vadney touched them all that time. Uh, foul lines have to be, or a foul line judge has to be there and some, mm -hmm. some of those little things that could crop up. That ball skipped on Steve just a little bit when it hit the lane and just missed the head pin. But I always say, if you know, I mean, ask Joe Ashling what he hit, even if it wasn't a record, what would your high three? 505. <laughs> and when you get the 505, you got the 505. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> And a 10 box. 103 now through eight, as you can see. 78 through six for the team of Ashline and DeLine. Been ahead the entire match so far. Boy, that looked like it might have been another strike on the way through. It looked as good as any of them, and he has delivered in the one three pocket, but leaves himself the five, uh, eight, nine, and 10. Piece of wood. Could help. It does. It does help. With a spare. That Mat is mark number eight for the team. And matches the, the mark put up by Steve Vadney in the seventh, although theirs was a strike. Oh, 
Another one. Wow. He moves him around a little bit, doesn't he? He certainly does. Seven, eight, all kinds of help out in front. Whoa. And that turned on him as the one rolled into the channel. The one in front of the seven pin turned a little bit and changed the whole complexion of the shot. I think he might have to play it now where the two pieces of wood meet. Before, I think he could have played to the right and swept everything from right to left. I still think it's covered, though. I think he still can play the eight pin if he has to. Oh, he's right in the middle. Yep. Two in a row now, just when Bob Mazur and Steve Vadden, they seem to make a run. Joe Ashline comes up, throws a pair of marks. Interesting little note, too, one of the rules of candlepin bowling. Uh, you might have noticed that right before going for that spare shot, Joe walked all the way up, kind of got on his tiptoes a little bit, and looked down the lane. You are not allowed to walk beyond the foul line in order to look at a shot, but Joe went right up to the foul line and kind of <laughs> gave himself a little extra elevation. <laughs> or foul line extended. If you were bowling on the end lane, you couldn't walk down like the catwalk or something to take a look at it, so. If that happens and you're caught, I think you're banned for life. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Two, four, and seven for Bob Mazur, and would really need this one. I really like this one. They've got to come back. Nope. Sometimes his ball will tail back to the right a little bit. That time, straight down the lane, just the four, seven. That's the one he wanted. 122, a two game total, 235 for Mazur and Vadney. They trail right now by 14, but Reggie will add to that with the spare fill. Oh, it's only three. He is working against two open boxes, though. Reggie just trying to get out of this one. Interesting, played the four instead of the, the three. So the lead right now, 17. Reggie opposite the 10 box. This could be an important uh, box right here. Drive the lead over 20 with a mark Ooh. right through the center again, but look what happened that time. <laughs> Got everything to fall forward. Now he's looking at the 3, 6, 10. But watch out for the wood. It's not frozen against the three pin. The tendency a lot of times to leave the six pin when this happens. Not Covered this it. time. That's mark number 10. Seven spares and three strikes for Ashline and DeLine. And the lead may be going up over 20 here. It does. The six fill, a 134, and a two game total, 258. So the lead is 23 for Reggie DeLine and Joe Ashline with one game to go here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. We'll be back for it in a minute. A look at Joe Ashline, who will lead off this third game. Oh, I guess the fact that Joe is leading off should not come as a great surprise. <laughs> He's a great leadoff hitter. <laughs> he hits them all right there for another strike. I would say that the way Joe is throwing the ball today, that was a pretty good call by the team to have Joe <laughs> lead off this one. Oh, I wonder mercy. if there's any debate. <laughs> Uh, I wonder if Reggie said, well, let's talk about this. <laughs> Just, no, I'm leading off. <laughs> no. Spare on strike. And you're leading by 23. And you put up another strike spare. It's a lot of pressure on the opponents. And Steve Adden, they just kind of have to match right now. Just keep it at 20-some pins. Let's see, did he match a strike? No, not quite. Well, you look at the four bowlers, you know, you talk about a strike bowler or of uh, those four bowlers, Joe doesn't surprise you throwing strikes. I think the rest of them, maybe Steve is in, not quite in that category, but they're more finesse bowlers. You, you're, you're looking for them to make different types of spares. 
Joe doesn't get to shoot at many spears. He gets too many strikes. <laughs> Steve Vadney on the strike in the first. That one slipped away a little bit on him. Just six. But when you're primarily a spare shooter, you've got to be on that head pin with that first ball. One, two, four, and ten pins for Steve. And he slides by the head pin on the left that time. Four teams have already gotten through to the Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions for this season. The number one seeded qualifiers right now, Ed Jorlman and Brian Fuller at 430. John Maffeo and Dave Arsenault are at 405. Bob Kelly and Larry Valcourt at 381. Stan Mayo and Scott Richardson are at 347. Reggie DeLine with the six fill on the spare. Trying to make it three in a row, no. So 45 through three. Bowlers, in case you're wondering, rolling two boxes on the same lane during this game because Joe this show too many is, strikes. right, Joe, this, <laughs> this show has gone by fast. Two, four left for Edge. Oh boy, you really held on to that one. And the nine box. So two opens, a chance for Bob Mazur now. The winners of this match come back next week to face Rico Baldinelli and Gary Carrington. Bob will try his hand at the two and the four. Yeah, a tough piece of wood, though. He's got to forget about it, aim at the two pin. Oh, oh my. Tough break. Killed it. The wood killed it. And the 10. Thirty-three pin lead, as you can see. It's time. They're gonna make a run at him. Light hit there. Again, only two pins standing, but you gotta watch out because of the wood here. Again, um, well, again, I, I guess you just gotta forget about it and go after the two pin. Yep. That time he does, and the spare in the fourth. So that may get the lead back down in the 20s uh, as we approach the final six boxes. We will take a break and have the rest of this match, Ashline and DeLine in the lead. We'll be back. <laughs> Joe Ashline was thrown four strikes today. Make it five. Ooh. Right through the middle, the one, the five, and the eight pin. Spread eagle plus the nine pin. And the nine. Well, is this the first time three open frames? No, early in the match they had one. They do have 12 marks though already. Well, let's see, there's your strike. You were just a box late, that's all. <laughs> the fifth strike that Joe Ashline has thrown today. Five strikes in 14 boxes. Wow. Steve Adney working on a spare. Triangle two, four, and five. Each box is, box is crucial now. And there's the spare. Especially, especially when you consider that Joe Ashline has two more boxes left. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, he's throwing the ball today. 
That's 10 marks for Vadney and Mazur. But they have been well scattered. Missing the head pin that time. Half a dozen, four horsemen, one, two, four, seven, piece of wood behind the one and the two, which should help keep those two pins in play. Let's see. Oh, no, wow, that would have been a big spare right there because it would have kept the lead under 20 going to the final four. But instead, Reggie DeLine will be able to add to it now as he steps up. Take a look at what happened here. Yeah, there's a little too much of the head pin instead of splitting the one and the two. Big fill for Reggie. That's nine. Got a chance for the spare on strike now. Testy piece of wood out front. Wants to be the right of the red line. Watch out. Oof. <laughs> Drove it right straight back. Fourteen marks for the team. Oh, good break there. Coming back for the six and then the three. Leaves himself four, seven left. Piece of wood out in front. Eight fill on the spare. Now Joe and Reggie are making it very, very tough right now. Yeah, Bob Mazur's in strike situations now, and but they've only thrown, what, one? Well. Joe and Reggie have a chance at a 400 when Joe comes up to finish it off. Nine box for Bob. Four horsemen with some wood in the back. Yeah, this is a must, and then they have to mark out and then get some help from the other team, and it's not going to happen for them. So, Joe Ashline now to finish the match. They're at 111, but he's working on a spare. A 142 would be a 400 triple. Seven fill. So he'll need one mark to get to 400. 246. Piece of wood in between. Uh, I should say 346. Oh. Piece of wood, do you say? <laughs> Forget the wood, Joe. Just split them and cut it over there. There's no problem. <laughs> Didn't even disturb the wood. It was a 3-4-6, and that's four marks in a row here to finish the game. Bowling in the tenth. One more strike, maybe? Not this time. That's your 400 triple right there. 404 right at the moment. 405, and he'll have one ball to go. Five marks in a row. Seventeen in all. Nine drop, one fifty-six, and a four, a three-game total. It seems like a four-game <laughs> total, but it's a three-game total of four fourteen for Joe De Ashline and Reggie Deline. It's a good piece of bowling right there. All strikes for Steve wouldn't be enough. And wouldn't you know, he's going to get one now. <laughs> How many times does it happen? Once you're locked out, they seem to all fall for you. Gets a little break here with a piece of wood rolling around, knocking the six pin down, and then, well, might as well knock the four pin down, too. Oh, there you go. Sure. <laughs> there you go. Not so difficult, huh? 
<laughs> you see, just tripping the four pin for the double strike. So they're going to have a, re a respectable three game total. That's right. Fortunately, they're going to come up with a loss. How about it one time? No, oh, not quite. <laughs> Well, that's a 9 fill and a 143, so Steve Vadney comes up with 46 pins in the last two boxes, but not enough. Joe Ashline and Reggie DeLine put the hammer down early and then were able to stretch it out in the third game. They win it 414 to 378. We'll be back to talk to all the bowlers and set you up for tomorrow and next weekend right after these words. Hi everybody and welcome back to the Londonderry Bowling Center and uh, week one of our, mix, our Stars and Strikes Doubles Tournament is now in the books with mixed doubles beginning tomorrow. We'll have a reminder about that a little bit later on. But uh, boy, Joe Ashline uh, and Reggie DeLine combining the strike ball working for Joe and they just were never really in trouble in that third game. I think somebody's got to clue Joe in that this is not a half hour show, it's an hour <laughs> show. He throws this many strikes that you and I got to really, uh, you know, I, I haven't. Tap dance, tap dance, you tap dance? I never did take no, my I, tap dance lessons, no, but... Uh, stand up here for a half hour. Well, or, uh, we're going you know, to have, we're gonna have Joe explain uh, about all those strikes individually, so that'll take a little time. Yeah, he's, I, like I said, after the show is over or before the break, I told him if he practices a little bit, he can throw a little quicker on the strikes, <laughs> and we'll have to wait a little longer at the end. At least Steve, uh, when he threw his two strikes, he had to wait for the machine to reset, so he helped us out a little bit. <laughs> but not take anything away from him. They're great bowling this week. Um, uh, they bowl well as a team, and uh, they defeated uh, another Cracker Jack Candlepin team. So. All right, Dan. Well, don't go away. We'll be talking to you again okay. in a couple minutes, but we want to bring up our two teams. First of all, let's talk to Bob Mazur and Steve Vadney. Come on up, guys, and uh, we will uh, award you the fifth place prize money, $150 to share. And uh, congratulations, guys. Slide right in here so that we can get everybody on. And uh, uh, congratulations uh, once again for coming back. Boy, uh, Joe made it real tough on you guys today. Yeah, I thought this was 10-pin ball in the way Joe was bowling. <laughs> he just threw out one ball and sit down. But uh, he, uh, they didn't leave us many openings during the match. And, and when they did, I, we couldn't take it full advantage of it. And obviously never got a chance to really climb back in. Seemed like there were, there were a couple of chances in that third game where maybe just one more mark might have pulled you right up close. But then again, you never know with the way these guys were going today. Yeah, I think. About halfway through, we were down about 18 pins, and uh, Reggie came up and threw two marks. And uh, like Bob says, he never let us get in. And, uh, you know, I threw the double up in, up in the first two. It might have made a big difference, you know. But like I said, they just never opened the door. I was going to say, but how, how ironic is it that you throw it and it's in the last couple of boxes? Right, right well, well, it's easy when you're, you know, <laughs> when it mathematically impossible. <laughs> well, congratulations, guys. Thanks very much for being here. Good to see you, and we hope to have you again back again soon. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right, Bob and Steve, congratulations. And uh, now Reggie and Joe, come on up. Uh, we're going to have Joe explain all this strike stuff here. And uh, congratulations. Uh, terrific effort, 414. Congratulations to you too, Reggie. Uh, you were the man today. You had that strike ball working. Yeah. Started right in the first box. Yeah, well, it's good to throw some strikes because uh, they're nine drops. You, you can miss them, and then you only get one ball to fill them. So what are you going to do? <laughs> now, you, you must have enjoyed this, Reggie, a little bit. Just watch, sitting back, watching a little bit. Huh? Right, i got to go to partner. <laughs> he carried me today, so I'm going to try to help him next time. Well, next time you've got uh, a pretty good team coming in, uh, Gary Carrington and Rico Baldinelli. Pretty pretty fair uh, combination, yeah. I would say. Yeah, I've heard of Rico. Um, Gary, I think, is new to the game. But, you know, I'll, when they get here, I'll uh, you know, see if I recognize them at all. Good luck next week, guys. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right. Reggie, congratulations. And, Joe, thanks a lot, and we'll see you next week. And uh, here's what will happen next week as we move into uh, week two now of our Stars and Strikes double series. It'll be Reggie DeLine and Joe Ashline going for two in a row, and they will face our number three-seated team, Rico Baldinelli and Gary Carrington. And uh, Joe, Joe using the psychological game to his advantage, uh, which is big, a big part of this after all. Well, you know, he, the show won't be taped uh, mm. before that one is shown, so he doesn't have a chance to get <laughs> Gary upset with him. But uh, I think I'll go back and tell Gary, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's uh, make another quick reminder, if we could, about the... Uh, 
benefit Bolathon to help raise funds for the Salem Boys and Girls Clubs. And we'll show you that address one more time so that you can jot it down. Again, Dan and I are having a little uh, friendly competition, three games each. Uh, we're going to take total pinfall and raise money according to the uh, scores that we shoot. And you can sponsor either one of us and help us raise money for the Boys and Girls Clubs as well. The Bolathon is actually being held today. So if you're in the area of Park Place Lanes and Wyndham, you may want to stop by and say hello. But if not, and you'd like to make a contribution, we'd love to hear from you by mail. Be sure and include your name, your full address, and either the flat amount check pledge that you would like to donate or the amount per pin that you would like to donate for either Dan or myself. Be sure you put either Dan or Doug somewhere on the envelope and mail it into Bolathon Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. I'm looking forward to this. The Bolathon, as we mentioned, is today. You and I are going to have our, uh, our competition in a little while, and then we'll announce the score on the air. Okay. I'm, I'm ready. I mean, you're the one who's been putting this off. Well, I think the, the one rule that I forgot to tell you about, though, is that you have to bowl in this suit. So you have to bowl in the suit and tie. Well, that, that'll keep it within 100, then. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Who knows? A uh, quick reminder also that uh, our Mixed Doubles Series, our annual event, begins tomorrow here on the Winds. That'll start uh, tomorrow at noon. And a uh, pretty good matchup shaping up there. So we've got uh, our field is already set uh, for the Mixed Doubles uh, competition. And we can tell you just a brief preview of tomorrow that it is an outstanding field. And uh, tomorrow's match features Bruce Young and Tony Marie Baldinelli against Kevin Davis and Nancy Hunt. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, yes, and all the way up the ladder. That's a great, uh, great lineup and uh, so should be some exciting bowling there as well. All right. Again, that's Mixed Doubles tomorrow here on the Winds. And then, of course, next weekend, Saturday, we're right back here for week two on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole Winds crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good weekend, everybody.